welcome to Labor Lens. I am Sharon Ijaston. On this week's episode of the program, we'll be discussing about the plight of the mint and print workers who were forcefully retired between 1999 and 2005. But first, let's take the news. We will be right back. The Kwara State College of Arabic and Islamic Legal Studies was established by the state government in 1992, primarily to promote the teaching of Arabic and Islamic legal studies at the tertiary level. The non-accreditation of most of the institution's programs is making both the teachers and students to be agitated. The last admission exercise, factually, all the results of our students who secured admission into Federal University were later terminated because of non-accreditation of our courses. What we want now is the state government to come to our head. We want the state government to do something for us. Most of us, we are, we are from poor, 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 poor background. We, we need the help of the state government. A visitation panel set up by the government to look into the issues made some recommendations which the government believes will solve the problems. One of the recommendations was that they should be encouraged to go back to the core objective of setting them up instead of doing these other courses that are not germane to that original uh, reason for setting them up. The other thing that the government is doing is looking at uh, encouraging them. In fact, the Executive Council actually approve, approved for Kyle's to seek affiliation with the Kwara State University, Malete, because right now they are affiliated with uh, another university in the north, which uh, they are accompanying a high cost. But the council's decision was that they should affiliate with Kwasu and therefore reduce the cost of any uh, of the affiliation and also the accreditation of their courses. Um, that is currently in motion. And the ultimatum. By Monday, we are going to give them another three days ultimatum. And after the three days ultimatum, my brothers, we are going on an indefinite strike. If and when they find out what the government is trying to do, to, to do for the school, and to improve their own even um, teaching standards and other things relating to the welfare of their students and of the school. I'm sure they will, they will withdraw that. But I don't think this is the time for ultimatums and threats. The plight of pensioners in Nigeria, especially ex-workers of the Nigerian Security Printing and Minting Corporation, according to many, has become worrisome as senior citizens who once worked for the company are not well taken care of by the government. For 26 years, we are in court. No justice. It's more than 25 years since the Nigerian Security Printing and Minting Company forcefully retired about 1,200 workers. Records show that some of the workers who had served the company diligently between 10 to 25 years earn as little as 1,000 naira as monthly pension or nothing at all. From May 1991, up to today, many people, are, some people have been receiving 1,000. In fact, today we are receiving 7,700. 800. Some, up to now, some people are still receiving that 800 as a, as a pension. As a general manager uh, or assistant general manager in the means, I'm receiving 2,800 naira every month up till this moment. My husband doesn't joke with his work. Felicia Okafor, who is a widow to Thomas Okafor, tells me her husband served the company for more than 17 years and received a certificate in recognition of his long and active service. According to Felicia, a deceased husband who worked in the currency department was hard-working and was never found wanting, despite the several risks involved. He came home one day crying, lamenting bitterly. That they are, they were, they, many of them they were given composite retirement, or some of them they terminated the appointment. And I asked him what happened. He said nothing. That they demanded for something, which they, some of them are taking their house allowance in, in a year. They are taking, and all of a sudden they, they, they those ones that are uh, they, that are ahead of them, 
they take their own, they happen to increase their own and they demanded for increment in their own. They, those ones say that they are living in Lakey and the, um, uh, Victoria, uh, Victoria Island warehouse are being leased. And my husband, they, their group, they happen to tell them that everybody knows the condition of Lagos. No one is living in the bush, that they should increase, increase something in their own allowances. As a result of that, they terminated, some of them they terminated their appointment. My husband, they gave him a compulsory retirement. You see? And that man was working tirelessly with the mint. There, in fact, there was a day my husband came come home. Do you see? His, one of his fingers almost cut off because of the engine they are using to work. Even was some of his legs are getting, some of them are getting rotty because of the chemical they are using there. You see? When they give him the compulsory retirement, they didn't give him anything. I and my children we started suffering since then. Eh? As a result of this, this, this man retired, he developed hypertension, which resulted to stroke, which he suffered for three years. I and, my, and my children, we suffered. There is no way I did not take this man. To. Even the meat, the meat hospital, they are not giving us any attention eh? after the retirement. No attention in the clinic. When I got there, they would say we should go and meet the mint, the mint, the mint. Eh? Even the, the, even the, 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 the pension, the pension, they started giving him 305 naira. There was a day they increased it to 700 naira before the man's death. Here is the spot where Thomas Okafo was buried. Just like him, many of his other colleagues who worked with the Nigerian security printing and minting company may die before they get justice. 20-something years and they continue to give in 1,000 Naira. Akonji Mudashiro Bolanli is also one of the retirees of the company. He says he was on annual leave when he was forcefully retired in 1991 after putting in more than 22 years of service. He released a statement of account from First Bank which clearly shows he receives 1,088 Naira, 64 Kobo as monthly pension. And anybody are working as me in that time, we do realize our father job. Because you can't if what you want to take from means any one of us who is working at me in that time, we took it like our own company. And since that time I was not have any queries or oh, uh, they will give me said okay suspension. No, nothing like that. For my twenty-two plus year. It is only myself. Uh, Matthew Okolo, an ex-soldier who fought actively during the civil war in 1969, was redeployed to the Nigerian Security Printing and Minting Company in 1978. He was subsequently affected by the retrenchment exercise that took place at the company. The mint were to produce a ballot paper for the presidential election of 1979. I was in a 4D headquarters here in the Kedja cantonment. They needed soldiers to produce those ballot papers. I was one of the 12 people that were successful in the exam we took at 4D headquarters. Now, based on that, we were sent to Minsk. I have a letter here to that effect. The letter they sent to my unit that they should release me and I should report to me. And that was around September 1978. Now the agreement then was that after six months, we will become a staff of Mint. We will be disengaged accordingly. Now we worked on their ballot paper within this period produced the ballot paper that brought Shagari into power in 1979. Now, finally, we were given a letter, the letter of my employment reads AA12. That is Army Attaché number 12. Well, we were 12 in number. Most of them are dead now. Most of them are gone. 
Despite having spent 10 years in the army and 12 years at the Nigerian Security Printing and Minting Company, Matthew Okolo did not get any payoff, neither does he receive monthly pensions, having served the country and also risked it all during the civil war in 1969. He wants his case to be addressed again, as many of his colleagues are now diseased. I've gone through some very difficult period of my life, but I thank God that he keeps me going. I've lost all, all my colleagues. So that's I'm talking to you, the only person I know is living now is Adele Bigbe and Oladakpo. I don't know of Abbas, I've lost contact with him for a very long time. Those are people that came with me, we are 12. Nearly all of, all of them have gone. In Lube, I went to this paper here now. Hmm? I, took, I went to Army Pension Office in 2016. They said we should come and uh, document ourselves, maybe for pension. I did it. These are the documents. Yeah. Now, that to no avail. After all that, there's nothing. Army has not done anything. Nothing has come from the army. Nothing has come from it. When I visited the Nigerian Security Printing and Minting Company, I learned that there is no corporate communications officer that could respond to TVT News inquiries. So I was directed to the reception by the gates where I gathered that there is only a legal department that my request for the company's side of this grim story was turned down. As he went there, everything they asked him to do. Felicia Okafor says she wants her husband's wish to be fulfilled. Despite the case being heard in several courtrooms in the country, including the National Industrial Court of Nigeria, there has been no breakthrough. I don't know why they have hardened their hearts. Let God enter into them, let them help us. As you are looking at me now, if you see where, where I'm living, where I am living as you are seeing it now, eh? even house rent I cannot pay. The landlord has been disturbing me every minute of the day. Now, if they happen, happen to throw my load outside, now where will I park to? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to do about this problem. Let God help us. Matthew Okolo also hopes his prayers and those of other ex mint pensioners who exited the company between 1991 and 2005 will be heard. The Nigerian system, the whole country is wicked to me. That's the way I look at it. It's wicked to me because I put on my life. There were many that left from my, uh, my, my, my village. A lot of them died in the, that civil war. But for me to survive it and become a, a, a living in penury is, is unfortunate. For many of the mint pensioners, receiving less than 10% of the national minimum wage as monthly pension, it has been a story of hardship, sickness, loss of loved ones, and many more. They want the Ministry of Finance, Central Bank of Nigeria, and the federal government to intervene promptly and put smiles on their faces before they all die.